Hello, I'm Sean Patrick Regan. I'm a professional bagpiper living just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, USA. This video's contents have been recorded, especially at the request of the Scottish Nationality Room of the University of Pittsburgh for their online series of musical and educational performances. So I thought, what could I do that might be of interest? And uh, then I realized that most of the people in the world are not, in fact, bagpipers and may have some questions about how to listen to competition bagpiping. If you ever go around to a Highland Games, you'll see a lot of different pipers and you may suspect that they're playing at varying levels but not know how to discern between one and the next. So what I've done is recorded four MSRs. That's a March, a Strathspey, and a Reel. Only the first three of them I've grouped in M's, and the next three I've grouped in S's, and the next three I've grouped in R's. The idea being that I've contrasted tunes of varying levels. Uh, the first march is a tune that you might find at the grade four or grade three level of solo competition, which is toward the bottom end of things. And then the next one is more grade three, two, and then the next one is one professional. There are six grades in the United States. Starting with grade five, they have bagpipes, uh, as well as practice chanter down at grade five. And then uh, there's grade four junior and senior, then grade three, grade two, grade one. That's all of the amateur levels. And then there's professional after that. Before I get into it, you should know that the bagpipe is loud. And it sounds, I mean, it is kind of funny to say, but uh, it's quite loud to the point where hearing it for longer than about two or three minutes in close proximity will damage your hearing or certainly can damage your hearing. So what I recommend is wearing hearing protection. I wear them all the time when I perform, compete, practice. So in the course of these videos, you'll see little tiny Frankenstein things sticking out the side of my head. The type that I wear are what are referred to as etymotic or musician earplugs, and they're designed to take off a couple of decibels across the range of sound. It's all very sciencey stuff and uh, the long and the short of it is that I can still hear the music it's just a little bit quieter. If you haven't already like and follow the Scottish Nationality Room page uh, as well as my YouTube channel SPR Bagpiper and my Facebook page Sean Patrick Regan comma Bagpiper for more interesting and educational material. Now there's a whole range of telltale signs that you can look for when trying to discern the level of a bagpiper. First thing that we're going to look at, though, is the music itself. This is not a clear telling sign, but it can be an indication. The first tune that I play in these three marches is called the Hawks of Cromdale. It's a very old tune, almost set up like a 4-4 march in that it's very open. You'll, you'll hear a lot of space between the notes. I find that this makes it very musical and makes it very appropriate for a beginning bagpiper to play in competition. After that, you'll find the Athol and Bredalbin Gathering. It's one of the most mispronounced tune titles on the planet, the Athol and Bredalbin Gathering. And this is a fairly moderate piece of music. There are some nice 16th note groupings or dotted and cut rhythms all back to back. And the tune itself is a little bit more complex from a construction perspective. You'll hear almost a storyline emerge over the course of the tune with an initial statement in the first part and then uh, exposition, development, even a little bit of a crisis in the third part, finally resolving into a very triumphant fourth part. The third tune is Cantara to El Arish. It's one of those tunes that I guess you don't hear very often because it seems that whenever I put it in, the judge picks it. I don't mind because I like it. Uh, but this one you'll find it has an interesting mix of both some space, especially in the second part, wide open spaces between some of the notes, but then suddenly a grip or uh, some other complex piece of technical finger work that really sets it apart and a level above the other two.
So you've just heard a couple of marches. Now it's worth pointing out that there are a number of other things besides the complexity of the tune or music that can indicate a piper's level. The tuning of the bagpipe is one thing if the drones don't sound like they work with the chanter. And another which is similar but subtly different from tuning, and that is tone, which has to do with the steadiness of the instrument. The steadier, the better. Unlike other musicians, we don't modify the pressure. Instead, we aim to keep a constant level pressure throughout the piece so that the three reeds in the drones can balance against the one double reed in the chanter. Strathspeys don't enter into competition until grade three, and this is in part because there's not really any such thing as an easy Strathspey. Strathspeys are dance tunes, but they tend to have a more stately flow to them. I've selected three Strathspeys, which I feel show varying levels of proficiency in the repertoire. The first is the Marquis of Huntley's Highland Fling. I mentioned they're all dance tunes. This one I have actually danced to. I used to be a competitive Highland dancer before suffering an injury that took me out of the running, or the leaping, I guess. In this piece, listen for the occasional three-note run, that is a ba-da-dum, and listen for the openness and clarity between the notes with the various embellishments, filling but not densely filling the space. The second Strathspey is Lady Loudon. This one, you'll find, has more diversity in the three-note rhythms, the ba-da-dum and ba -da, da which you'll find jumping around from place to place. And there's a little bit more back and forth between the hands. It starts with an absolute showcase of the E-doubling, which is a chitty, a chitty, a chitty, a chitty, which you find a lot of throughout various tunes, but especially this one. And that helps to show the player's consistency in theory. The third Strathspey is Dora McLeod. This is a tune shared between the solo and band repertoire. It has a subtly higher level of difficulty and nuance than Lady Loudon, which you'll see especially in the third and fourth parts.
Next, we have three reels. Now, reels are also dance tunes, and they're generally thought of as being faster than strathspeys, but the speed doesn't really matter. What matters is a contrast between the strathspey and the reel. The first reel is one that you can't scarcely walk through a grade three or grade two competition field without hearing, and that is Lexi McCaskill. It's a very impressive sounding piece of music, lots of E's that give it a strong sound. E strikes and E doublings as well. And while it does have some technical demand, you'll find as the tunes progress, it's not quite up to the same level as the others. The second reel is often heard at the grade two level. It's called Colonel McLeod. It's a very musical piece, and it's a little bit of a step up from a technical as well as from a musical perspective from Lexi McCaskill. Finally, the third tune is The Sound of Slate. Now this one is interesting because it's not strictly speaking a professional level tune, although it can be played at that level. I feel that this tune really illustrates the diversity of the idiom in that it rises or falls to the level of the piper playing it. It has a different second ending between the second and fourth part, which has been the bane of many a piper at all levels, because you get to that certain point and then you think for an instant, is it a D or is it an E? I'm pretty sure I got it right this time though. Now I've got one more thing that I think is pretty cool, uh, but before I show it to you, I hope that if you've enjoyed this, you'll give it a thumbs up. And again, you'll go like the Facebook pages of the Scottish Nationality Room and of myself, uh, and even follow, subscribe, whatever the buttons are, click all of them, 
on YouTube as well, SPR Bagpiper. There's a lot of videos there. So if you like bagpiping, you'll, you'll probably like it. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but my hope is that you'll enjoy it. Now, at the very beginning, I mentioned that I think not many people can tell the difference from one piper to the next. So I racked my brain to think of a grade one competitor that I could contrast myself with, and I found a video of me from eight years ago when I played in grade one for the World Online Piping and Drumming Championship. So what I've done is I've re-recorded the tunes in the MSR that at the time won first place in the world. And I've, uh, I hope that you'll be able to hear a difference <laughs> because it's been eight years. So here then is the Balmoral Highlanders, four parts. It's also a six part march, but I play a four part setting. Followed by Susan McLeod, a Strathspey, lovely musical piece. Followed further by The Sheepwife, which is a six part reel, very aggressive, dark sounding piece of music. Uh, to finish things off. Played by uh, eight years ago, grade one me, and that will be followed by the same three tunes played by about 20 minutes ago, now me.
I should mention as well that the bagpipe played in both of those videos is the same one. Not only is it the same drones and the same chanter, but it has the same drone reeds in it. Unfortunately, I've long since buried the chanter reed that I played back in 2012. But I thought it was remarkable to hear the contrast between the same instrument eight years apart. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you around before too long.